How's it going? Ben Mills here, and we have hardware asset management installed. So welcome back. Uh, we are continuing our series on standing up ham. Um, first thing that we want to do is let's let's navigate to the plugins again here. We always want to make sure that we are up to date um, with our hardware asset management plugins. So let's just give that a look. Great, we have one installed over the hardware asset and looks like we are up to date. And as you can see, if we go to the filter navigator now, type in hardware. Um, actually, let's just do hardware. Um, we can see some of the features uh, of Ham Pro. So we see the hardware asset dashboard. Uh, we see the hardware asset workspace. We will be covering an overview of the workspace uh, in a later video. Uh, it's a very, very powerful tool. Um, very streamlined uh, user interface that um, allows for a lot of decision making. Uh, a lot of operations uh, are, are, are worked out of the hardware asset workspace. So uh, looking forward to uh, bringing you that, that video soon. Uh, we have hardware model normalization. Um, we, we talk about that standardization of the manufacturer, product, model, field, and device type. Um, we also see content service setup and we see the resource categories. So um, yes, we do have hardware asset management installed here. Um, before we start hopping into these applications though, let's um, talk a little bit about the guided setup. In this video, I uh, would like to walk through standing up each one of the categories in the guided setup. So um, let's go up to our filter navigator. Let's go guided setup. Fantastic. So we're going to look for the one under asset. Here we are. We have the ham guided setup. And here we are. Um, so again, this is going to be that wizard like feature that allows us to go through the leading practices when it comes to uh, standing up. A hardware asset management. So let's go ahead and get started. You'll see that we have two sections, one for the configuration and then one for the normalization. Um, let's get started with our resource uh, categories here. That's 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 going to be our first one uh, in configuration. So just a little bit about ham resource categories, right? So you have the ability to opt in specific hardware models um, that Hardware Asset Management Pro is going to normalize, right? This is going to dictate what categories are going to be uh, normalized when the normalization job is run in Hardware Asset Management. Um, we can opt in for end-user computers, mobile devices, network gear, and servers. So you do have the option to um, not uh, opt in to one of these categories. Um, resource categories are, are used for calculating your licensing costs with Hardware Asset Management Pro. Uh, for the purposes of this demo, we are going to opt into all resource categories because we want our computers, our mobile devices, our network gear and servers, those models, we, we want those models to be normalized. So we're just gonna go over here to configure. This is for end user computers. Um, looks like this is already opted in. Um, we're good and, and and we'll note the subscription unit ratio for in-use computers is four to one So in addition to being able to opt in opt out You will also have an understanding of um, how uh, these are viewed from a subscription unit ratio standpoint So we are opted in here, which is good. Let's just validate mobile devices as well. So we're going to configure We are already opted in We're going to validate network here configure we are opted in here and finally servers and we are opted in. So all of our hardware models in these categories uh, will be normalized when the hardware um, asset management uh, runs its normalization job. So we can mark this one as complete. Next, we are going to um, look at the content service setup where we're going to look at opting in here. Um, so just to make sure that we are all on the same page on what this does is um, for data that is custom or data that we are unable to normalize, uh, uh, this information is fed back to our ITAM content team where uh, they can look at it, analyze it, um, and in many cases, 
uh, add it uh, to our uh, add, add mappings and normalize content to our content library as curated data that um, customers are able to download in a weekly job. Uh, what this does is it uh, it increases the hit ratios uh, for the types of hardware that you are discovering in your environment. So um, in this case, um, for things that I create that are custom um, or things that don't get normalized, I do want to be able to send the data back to our ITAM content team uh, in order to look at and improve the offerings in our content library. So we're just going to, yes, opt in. And we see this goes for hardware models, consumable models, uh, lifecycle dates uh, for, for hardware and consumables, as well as custom product models. So we're good here. And we'll mark this one as complete. So continuing the setup, we're going to look at asset automation, asset actions for incident and change. So with this configuration, um, we are going to allow um, incident records and change records to update the asset uh, when we're doing things like deploying, swapping or retiring assets to make sure that the life cycle is staying up to date as these um, as, as, as these events occur. So we're going to configure and we are going to go over to a change record. Now, what we're looking for is asset action in swap CI. We don't see that here. So what we're going to do is we're going to right click on the column header. We're going to configure the list layout and we're gone and we're going to bring over asset action and swap CI. Bring those over. We're going to save. Great, we have those in now um, and this has been configured. Let's close that out. Let's check and see if it's done for the incident. So same drill, we're gonna configure. Let's open up an incident. And it looks like the configuration has been done uh, on the incident form already. So we're in good shape here and we'll mark this one complete. Next, okay, next let's um, make sure that we activate the catalog items for asset lifecycle. So for hardware refresh, for loaner asset requests, for, for RMAs, if we want those requests visible in the service catalog, this is where we would ensure that they're enabled. So let's configure and let's validate that it is active. It is active, so we are good to go here. We can just close this one out, mark it as complete, and we'll move on to the next. Um, next is the asset lifecycle workflows. So let's configure. Great. So these workflows, and we'll hop into these workflows a little bit more um, in another video series. But uh, this is your RMA, your reclamation workflows, um, your lease, your loaner asset request, um, your standard hardware request. Um, these are those workflows. Looks like they are all active. So no further configuration is needed here. So we'll close this out and mark this as complete. Uh, contract work, uh, uh, workflows, specifically um, um, contract re renewals, right? Um, this is where we would uh, ensure that uh, this is enabled. So let's configure. Looks like it is set to true um, already. If we need to edit this though, we would just click here to edit and you would update this value here uh, from false to true if it's false by default in your instance. We can mark this as complete. And finally, we have the asset map view. Um, this is for indoor mapping. So if we want to visualize um, our workspace, buildings, floors, cubicles. Um, this feature would allow us to take advantage of that so we can configure. By default, it is set to false. So we're gonna click here to edit the record. We're gonna to update to true. Gonna update. Great, and we can mark this one as complete. So that takes care. Um, of the uh, first portion of the guided setup. 
Next, we are going to go over to the normalization section. As a quick tip, I just wanted to review with you the process of marking your tasks as complete. Um, so each of the subcategories under resource category opt-in, each has their own complete button. So make sure that as you're opting in to each one of these categories, um, the percentage completion is going to be based on marking completion for uh, user computers, moving over to mobile device, marking com completion for that one, network gear servers as well. So anytime we have a category uh, in the guided setup and it has multiple subcategories, uh, make sure that we are marking each complete so that we can uh, understand um, if we've completely gone through the guided setup. Just a quick tip. Thank you. So let's get started. First thing we, we want to do is um, ServiceNow has curated content uh, for a lot um, of the categories that we're interested in standardizing. So we're talking man manufacturers, life cycles, products and product models. Uh, so what we're going to do now is we are going to kick off these jobs and uh, get them going so we can get that content populated. So let's open up this job. Fantastic. And let's execute this job now and begin the process of getting that content. All right, and we're going to configure and we'll move down to do the same thing for lifecycle. Let's execute this job. Great. Manufacturer. Let's execute this one now. just about done I'm going to get product model all right so we've initiated our content job so um, we're going to start downloading that curated content so we can begin normalizing our hardware models uh, as we get hardware entries created um, and Let's configure hardware model normalization. Um, so hardware model normalization is, we aren't gonna kick this off just yet um, because we don't have any content uh, to normalize our hardware or consumable models with um, against yet. But uh, once we get um, that curated data and we have some hardware models populated, we can come in and execute this job um, to begin the normalization process so we can standardize things like the manufacturer, the product, uh, and the model so we can have a standard list of hardware assets. So this concludes all of the steps required to stand up hardware asset management. Uh, in our next series, we are going to do a brief overview of the features uh, with the hardware asset management professional. Thank you very much.